Hey guys, today we're going to be talking all about the five mistakes you want to avoid as a wedding photographer. So without further ado, let's get right into it. If you're new here, my name is Abi and I'm a wedding photographer and videographer based out of the beautiful Gold Coast, Australia and I run a wedding photo and video company called Meadow Lane Visuals. I absolutely love what I do but one thing I love more than being a creative is helping other creatives achieve their goals as well. So on this channel I talk all about photography tips, business tips, marketing strategies, all things that I've learned from my own experience that hopefully help you create a six-figure wedding company as well. So if that sounds interesting to you, it would greatly be appreciated if you guys could leave a like on the video and subscribe, and that way we can all stay up to date. Now, the number one mistake you want to avoid as a wedding photographer is not bringing backups. This is probably the biggest mistake you want to avoid and that's why I wanted to mention it first because the thing is on a wedding day you are capturing once in a lifetime moments that you don't really have the luxury of having to redo again. So it is our job as the photographer, the paid professional to be responsible to capture all these moments to the best of our ability. And one way that we can prepare for this and avoid any of these problems is by bringing backups. So that means at very least shooting on a camera that takes dual SD cards. The reason for this is because SD cards corrupt. It's happened to me once or twice and seriously, it is one of the hardest conversations you will have with a couple. So it's better to avoid than to fix later on. So shoot on a camera that has two SD cards and at very least as well, bring another backup camera. You know, cameras break and sometimes they can happen. And so if you're ever in this situation, you don't want to be left kind of like looking at your couples like, well, um, there's nothing I can do here because my camera broke. So try to bring a backup camera and all the other things as well. Bring multiple formatted SD cards. You know, you never want to be running out of space and especially bring backup batteries as well. Because trust me, my friends, there is nothing worse than shooting the ceremony and they're about to go for the first kiss when you notice your camera flashing that it's about to die. Honestly, that is the biggest anxiety trigger in the world because like I said, these are once in a lifetime moments. We do not have the luxury of doing it again. So just prepare yourselves. It's better to avoid it than to fix it later on. Other things to keep in mind for bringing backups for is lenses as well. You know, you can accidentally drop your lens and it breaks or maybe your lens will just stop focusing, whatever, you know, all these things can happen. And even with cars as well, I know having a backup of a car is kind of difficult, but if you're working with a second photographer, you know, have them take their own vehicle so that if in the chance that your own vehicle breaks down, then you can jump into theirs. I know that one's kind of hard to prepare for, but if you can avoid it, let's do our best. So number one, bring backups of everything. Number two, not meeting with your couples beforehand. Meeting with your couples beforehand is so important for so many different reasons. Firstly, because by meeting them and talking about the wedding day, you will both have a clear understanding of what's happening and you'll know what to expect and there'll be no surprises on either end. But not only that, meeting with your couples often and talking about their wedding day would make you come across as a professional who genuinely takes the time to care about their couple's needs. And also by meeting them more and talking to them more and interacting more, it will only make them more comfortable with you. If you're able to kind of get on that best friend level with your couples, it will make them feel comfortable, it will let their guard down, allow them to become vulnerable, show their true selves, which makes the day more enjoyable for them and for you. And like I said, make for better images as well, because they're not being all awkward and shy in front of the camera anymore. They know who you are, you feel like a friend, and they can just be their complete selves in front of the camera. So number two is meet with your couples beforehand. Now the third mistake you want to avoid as a wedding photographer is not arriving earlier than you think. So after you finish your client meeting with your couple and you guys are scheduled to arrive at around 11, do your best to try arrive 20 to 30 minutes beforehand. Because trust me, wedding days kind of run their own show. The couple do their best to kind of stick to the schedule as best as they can, but so many things happen. So many things get in the way. People want to hug and kiss and talk and all that stuff. And so 
it's kind of rare for it to kind of follow a strict timeline. So by arriving earlier than you think, you allow yourself to kind of just have enough time to prepare for the worst. You know, there's been times where a couple tells me, all right, the hair and makeup will be done at 12, so come around then. And then I arrive at 12, and then I get there, and then they tell me, oh, so sorry, the hair and makeup actually finished at 11.30 or 11. And everyone was just kind of waiting around for me to arrive. You know, if I took the time to properly arrive there a little bit earlier than expected, I would have come across more of a professional. And even if things do go according to plan, it's always best to arrive earlier anyway. Number one, because it always sets a good feeling for the couple, knowing that you're there and ready, but also it gives you lots of time to set up, scout the area, and just do a better job overall. So make sure you try to arrive a little earlier than expected because it will leave a lasting impression on all the guests and the couple as well. The fourth mistake you don't want to make as a wedding photographer is not using a questionnaire. Now, I can personally say that this was one of the things that changed my business and really took me from someone who feels like a hobby photographer to an actual paid professional. Having your couples fill out a questionnaire is honestly a lifesaver because you can have as many client meetings with them but the thing is we can't remember everything they say. So being able to have that questionnaire in your back pocket to kind of look back onto for emergencies really saves you in a pinch. You know, they might've mentioned something about their wedding day that you forgot. Maybe it's a special tradition or a cultural thing, or maybe they're doing something funny for their groomsmen or bridesmaids. Whatever it may be, if you have all these things written down, it's almost impossible to forget about them. So take the time to craft the perfect questionnaire. Now, some of the questions you want to be including in yours would be something like, will there be family photos, including the names of the family shot list, um, any special traditions, the addresses of the venue and where they're getting ready, um, the run sheet of the day, all these little things. Just try to think of all the things that will help you do a better job on the wedding day and just write them down. And the fifth mistake you don't want to make as a wedding photographer is, not being aware of your surroundings. Now this one might sound obvious, but the thing is, as photographers, we often get tunnel vision, looking at the world through our viewfinder. It's easy for us to only think about ourselves and how to get the best shot. But the thing to remember is there are other guests invited to that wedding who want to enjoy their experience as well. Now I understand at certain times, there may be situations where we need to position ourselves in the best angle or location to get the best shot but just be a little aware of the people behind you. If we linger in that spot for too long, we could possibly be blocking their view, which may upset the guests. But not only thinking about the guests, we need to be aware of other objects in the room as well. You know, I've heard horror stories of photographers walking backwards and then they bump the cake onto the floor. Making sure the guests are enjoying their time is also crucial for our own business as well, because one of the best ways to get more leads is by word of mouth. They will most likely talk with a couple and if they enjoy your service and they found you enjoyable to work with as well, then they'll most likely want to hire you. Now, these are only a few things to consider when you're shooting a wedding and there's still a lot more that we could dive into but I don't want to overwhelm you guys so if you start off with these five things and always keep them in the back of your mind you'll be set up for success and if you guys enjoyed any part of this video or found any of these tips helpful, like I said, it would greatly be appreciated if you guys could leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in creating a six-figure wedding company as well, make sure you guys check the link in the description to schedule in a call with me. I'll be more than happy to help you with anything you need. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much.